Steam enters a steady flow turbine with a mass flow rate of 13 kilograms per second at 600 Celsius, eight megapascals and a negligible velocity. Okay, so can ignore the kinetic energy. That's what Atenas is telling us. The steam expands into a two-stage adiabatic turbine. In the first turbine, the steam expands to a saturated vapor at 300 kilopascals, and where 10% of the steam is removed for some other use. The remainder of the steam continues to expand to the second turbine exit, where the pressure is 10 kilopascals and the quality is 85%. Determine the power output of the turbine. Okay, so the power output of this turbine here, this combined turbine is going to be the output of this guy here, this first guy, plus the output of this second guy here. Okay, now what's happening here? We have a initial um, energy set of properties, set of energy properties here, which is of high energy, right? And then we go through the first turbine and then we leave that turbine with a lower set of properties, right? Lower energy set of properties. But this guy still goes through another turbine and then we leave finally at lowest state of energy within this question. Okay, so in spite of being two, the way we solve is pretty much the same, right? When we tackle these kind of questions, we're gonna solve, see how much work this first guy produces and how much work the second guy produces, okay? Let's go ahead and do that. And note that the answer has been given from last week, so you already have the answer and you know they're asking for power, right? The rate of change of energy in respect to time. So let's draw up this problem. And this is going to be week six, and our problem is problem 5.52. And let's just go ahead and draw our two turbines here. I'm just doing to do two little rectangles. As my turbines, it's my first turbine, this is my second one. What do we know about these guys? Let me just write your turbine two and turbine one. Okay, we're gonna have thing that's going in this direction here, going from here to here. Uh, let's go ahead and write down our that we're dealing with steam so that we don't get wrong properties on wrong tables. We know the P1 and T1, so P1 is 8 megapascals and T1 is 600 Celsius. We know P2, which is 300 kilopascals. We also know it's a saturated vapor. And then on T3, we know our pressure 3 is 10 pascal, kilopascals. And we know the quality, which is 85%. Okay. What's different here is that we have a loss of mass, right? The mass still has to be conserved, but it's gonna be conserved from here to here. Because over here, we're gonna have split the mass up. So we're not, it's not like we're destroying any mass, we're just part of the mass is leaving your system. So this initial mass, let's call it M1, that's the 13 kilograms per second. And then I'm gonna call this second one M3, just because. We're used to dealing with this as M1, then this would be M2, right? So I'm going to call this M3 because it's related to the third one, but any name that you want, really. So it's going to be 13 times 90%, right? Because we lose 10% of it. And that is 11.7 kilograms per second. Okay, so we had that slight change that's slightly different from what we had before. And we just need to make sure that we remember that. Very important as well, there's no heat going in or out of the system because they are adiabatic processes. So that's something for us to remember, quite important. And I want you guys to note that all three states that we're dealing with are defined, right? We have two properties for the first state, two state properties, so pressure and temperature, that's good. Second one, we have the pressure, and we, it's, it's a saturated vapor, it says so, so we're good. Third one, we have the pressure and we have the quality. So we know this guy is a mixture and it has 85% of vapor, 15% of liquid, right? So let's have a look at what's happening here. If we think of our energy states, let's think it like that. We just have one more down the ladder. That's all that's new here, <clears throat> right? So our first energy state's the highest one, then we go to a mid-range one, and then we go to a lowest state. 
energy possible. And then what happens here? Since we are, we have a delta U here, and we have delta U, and we have a PV, right? We're going to have a change in energy here, and this energy cannot be created or destroyed. So this has to leave our system, right? It has to be leave our system because we're going to a lower state of energy. So it has to leave our system either in the form of work or in the form of heat. Since there's no heat here, this has to be work. And this is precisely the work of the turbine. So let's just do work T1 for turbine 1. Exactly the same thing can be said for this second drop here, right? Because it's still Q equals zero, adiabatic. So this change here is equal to the work that the second turbine can produce. Now we're going to go into um, the second law later. And the second law is going to relate how much of this work is actually useful work. How much can we actually take, um, convert from the energy that's being supplied to actually useful work. For now, this is a, an ideal system. All the energy here can actually be converted into work, so we don't have to worry about that for now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna grab the enthalpy for these three states because we know that the relationship between the PV and the delta U is equal to the enthalpy. So if I can trace the change in enthalpy from this state to this state, I can find this guy here. So let's just start by grabbing our entropy. So on page 910 on table A6. What you can do is you can first go to table um, A5, and then you're going to see that these guys, this is a superheated state, right? Either looking at the pressure or the temperature, you see this is superheated. So go to the superheated table, and we're 500 meets 8 megapascals. I'll go ahead and grab my enthalpy, which is 36.42.4. Okay, and that's kilojoules, kilograms. Is then, H1, sorry? Go again. Is that meant to be H1? It is. Thank you. First state. Thank you. Yeah, first state. Cheers. All right, just put the wrong index there. Okay, and then for the other two states, for the state three and state two, we're going to go on table A5. And I'm looking at page 906. And for H2, for the second state here, I'm just going to look at 300 kilopascals, and I'm going to grab the saturated vapor one. Okay, the saturated vapor one at 300 kilopascals is uh, 27, 27, 24.9. Okay, and this is at 300 kilopascals. And then for the third one, I'm going to have a combination of both vapor and liquid, so I'm going to have a combination of both enthalpies. So what I can do is I can go ahead and grab the enthalpy for the saturated liquid at 10 kilopascals, which will be 191.81. Kilojoules per kilogram, and I'm also going to grab the saturated vapor at 10 kilopascals, and this guy is 2583.9. Yeah, and then we've done this a million times. Our H3 is going to be a combination of them, both of them, so it's 85% times whatever the Vapor one is, it's 2583.9. And the reminder that is the 15% that is in the form of liquid is going to have the liquid energy, which is 191.81. Okay, I've got for this guy, and these are all in kilojoules per kilogram, so I can sum them up. And I've got 2225.1, 2200. And 25.1 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, back me up nice so that I don't do any mistakes. Okay, now let's first talk about turbine one. Grab the output of turbine one. 
And then afterwards, we can sum up with turbine two to get the total output for this combination here. So turbine one, let's think to once again, apply our conservation of energy principle, which states that the energy on the first state plus the kinetic energy on the first one plus the potential energy on the first one has to be equal to one on the second one plus kinetic energy on the second one plus the potential on the second one, second one, plus whatever energy left the system, right? So in this case, the work of the turbine one. If we had heat, we don't, but if we had, we would also put it in here, right? Because it came from this pot of energy that we had in the beginning. Now, velocity is negligible. So we can read this, guys. We can ignore potential energy for the same reasons that we could last week, right? Turbine difference on the height of the molecules is not quite different from one side to the other, so we can ignore the potential energy. So, this is only left, the only thing we're left with is the difference in, in H's, which is equal to that, guys. So H1 minus H2 equals the work of turbine one. And H1 minus H2 is quite trivial because we have 3,600 minus 2,700, right, ish. So that is 900 and not 17, no, yeah, 17. That's kilojoules per kilograms. Okay, now we had a peek at the answer, and you guys can use the answer that's been provided for you to check out the units. Because that, looking at the units, is going to give you an idea of what the answer is looking for. Okay, and you can see the answer is in watts, megawatts precisely. So it doesn't want the answer in energy, it wants in power. Right? So how can we obtain power? We remember that power is just the rate of change of energy with time, right? So just look at the units here. Just have a look at the units. This guy here is going to be joules per second, right? What we have at the moment is kilojoules per kilogram. So as long as we can multiply by something that is kilograms per second, we can eliminate the kilograms and be left with what we're looking for, right? In other words, we now have the rate of change of energy in respect to the mass. If we multiply by how the mass is changing with time, we can eliminate these two guys and be left with what we're looking for. And we do have this guy here, that's the mass flow rate, right? And it's been given for turbine one as 13. So power output of turbine one will be equal to 917.5 kilojoules per kilogram times my 13 kilograms per second, which will render an answer in kilowatts, right? But notice this is going to be more than a thousand. So I'm going to go ahead and convert it to the megawatts. And now I've got 11.9275 kilowatt megawatts. Okay, as simple as that. And now that we have turbine one, we can do turbine two. Using the same principles, okay, same idea. We're left with the idea that the difference between the second state and the third state, what is that? This difference here, right? It's going to be equal to the work of our turbine okay and in this case here it's going to be uh, 2700 minus 2200 yeah so about 500 mm. the actual number is 499.8 and that again kilojoules per kilogram so what do we do we multiply by the mass flow rate now the only trick here the only thing that i think you may slip your mind because it's new is that the fact that our mass flow rate is not 13 anymore, right? It's 11.7 for the second turbine. So we're looking at the second turbine, therefore our mass is 17 point, oh, sorry, 11.7 instead of 13. So the power output of the turbine two will be 
0.8 kilojoules per kilogram times my 11.7 kilograms per second, which is going to give me again an answer that's going to be more than a thousand in kilowatts. So I'm going to convert it to megawatts. So about 5.84 kilowatts, and I'm going to put down directly about 5.85 megawatts. Okay, so we broke the problem into two parts. We found out that the first part provides uh, about 12 megawatts of energy, of uh, power, 12 megawatts of power. And the second turbine provides about 6 megawatts of power. So the total one, right, the total power output equals the sum of the turbine one and the turbine two, which is about 17.8. Megawatts. Okay. So no big deal. Nothing that's very, very new. It's just the fact that we have that one um, extra turbine there, but we just solve it as we would normally, right? Just isolate them, solve one at a time. Do you guys have any questions on this first one and this first problem? <laughs> 